Hello friends, happy Friday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. It's Lisa Hetrick. Hello, hello. It's the first live of the new year and I'm super excited to be here with you today. I see people popping in. I also see people sharing things about how snowy it is where they are. So I know that there's a snowstorm in the Midwest and kind of making its way over. So I hope everybody's safe and warm. Okay, friends, I have a really fun tutorial today. I don't even know if it's a tutorial. It's a total nerd out. We, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I'm going to structure some content on, on YouTube and the lives and what we're going to do. I've kind of been talking about it a little bit in some of the other lives before the end of the year. But before we get started, let's just say hello to everyone. Hello. And find that. Yay. Um, say hello to everyone. Michelle, Rhonda. I hope Rhonda, you're staying warm. I, you talked about the, the weather where you are. Kathy, Judith, Wilma, Barbell, Dawn, Donna. Holy smokes. There's so many friends here today. Super fun. Okay. And Cherie just popped in. Okay. So today, Anytime along the way, so we're going to start off the new year, anytime along the way on the lives, if you have a question, just pop question in the comments. If I'm facing you and I go this way, that's where the comments are. So um, it doesn't mean I'm looking away from you. It just means I'm heading over to look at the comments or to look at the question and answer it. And <clears throat> today we're talking about masking products or masking things with our watercolor paintings and our watercolor cards. So today I'm going to focus on masking magic from Gina K Designs and masking fluids. I've got a couple different masking fluids I'm going to share with you today, but I've got two that are my super favorites. All of the supplies that I'm using today are listed down below in the description in Facebook and YouTube. And I've put them there because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through the supplies ahead of time, but I will talk through them as we're moving through and nerding out with them. So today's tutorial is gonna be a little bit different. Um, less focused on the anatomy of the card making and more focused on the techniques and me sharing a little bit about masking. Now this was a request from all of you um, and something that's helping me shape how I'm going to share techniques with you this year. So let's go ahead down to our overhead cam and talk about and get started on what we're going to do today. Okay so here's here's the card that may get produced today. We'll see. This is our goal. But if we don't get the card like completely produced in the hour, we've got this as our inspiration. But I am going to walk you through all of the steps and the masking techniques that I used to achieve this washy watercolor look with these touches of whimsy that we've got going on here. Now, I will share that the watercolor paper that I'm using because that's one of the number one questions I get asked, is the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. This is the paper that I use for paper crafting projects. Everybody in the chat, you've all been here before, you know you've seen me talk about this quite a bit. Now, the stamp set that I'm using today is, holy smokes, I literally have just forgotten what it's called. Yeah, Speak Beautiful Things. So I'm using Speak Beautiful Things today from my Gina K line. And just a quick FYI, there's a brand new, the new stamp set coming out. My newest stamp set will be coming out on Tuesday with Gina K. Brand new release on Tuesday. I'm just gonna pop my face in here. Next Tuesday is the new release of the January release for Gina K Designs. I'm super excited about that set. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. Okay, now, um, Let's just dive in and talk about what we're going to do today. I've got some masking magic here. This is my Gina K Designs Masking Magic. And I've got my big honkin'. This is a chamomile. When I drew this, it was inspired by chamomile, 
flour. So I have stamped my chamomile flour onto the masking magic and I've cut it out and it's now become my mask. And this is one of the beautiful things about the Gina K masking magic. Two things. A, I just love it that you can reuse it. It's got, it keeps it, it retains that low tax stickiness and you can reuse it. And the other thing I'm going to share with you today is we're going to use it with wet, with watercolor and wet mediums. So, and it takes the beading of the water and doesn't shred. It'll dry. I've done this like three times now, gotten this wet and it has dried and I'm going to reuse it again today. Okay. So that's the stamp set that I'm going to be using. I've got my masking magic. This is one of the masking tools that I'm going to be using today. And then I'm going to bring in and talk a little bit. Let's just have our little nerd out about masking fluids. And this is just a couple that I have in my stash. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Masking fluid. Here's one from Core. So masking fluids feel a little bit like if you guys can remember, if anybody can remember rubber cement. So when masking fluids dry, they feel a little bit like rubber cement. If you remember using that, I remember using it in elementary school and I remember how bad it smelled. Um, so masking fluids have a little, they're wet, but we use them, you can use them in your projects to mask off or just uh, preserve an area in your project that you want to be white. And there's lots of different brands that are out there. So here's one from Winsor Newton. Here's one from Core. Here is one from Nuvo. I actually really liked this one because it um, has this tip so you can kind of draw with it. Um, <laughs> Dawn says she still has some rubber cement. That's kind of funny. Rubber cement can kind of be used in this way as a masking fluid. There's this PBO drawing gum, and then there's this Schminka masking fluid. Now, these two are my favorites. If I'm going to use a liquid masking fluid in my project, these two are the ones that I'm going for, and I'm going to share why. So I'm going to put these aside. Now, these can do, these can do the job easy but these two are my favorite and I'm going to tell you why and then we're going to do some water coloring with them so I can show you why. So this is the Schminka and the reason why I love it is that it's a little bit thinner. It's blue okay so it's a little easier for me to see. I can draw with it and and get that tip you know, depending upon how much I squeeze it, I can draw with it and it stays blue. Whereas some of the other masking fluids that are white, dry white and make it difficult to see. So I love that it's blue so that you can see it. And then this PBO one, this drawing gum is super, super liquidy. Good morning, Pamela. Super, super liquidy. So you can paint with it. Now, you can paint with the other masking fluids too. You can paint with all masking fluids. You can even paint with this one if you want to dip it in, but I really like that applicator tip. Makes it super, super easy. Now, when you're painting with masking fluid, you're, wanna, you're going to want to grab, you're going to want to grab some really inexpensive craft-like um, brushes. So these brushes right here, yeah, these are just some craft brushes. Um, I think from Michaels, you can tell. So I like, you can dip your brush right in and I can paint with it. And the thing about the masking fluid is that it will ruin a good brush. So you don't want, and you want to clean real quickly. It'll ruin a good brush, but if you're using like a craft brush, it's really not that big of a deal. If I didn't wash this and clean this off right away, it would just get kind of gummy and sticky. 
But what I really like about this particular brand, before I spill it all over the place, what I really like about this PBO drawing gum is that it is a lot more liquid, liquidy, not as thick as even the Schmincke. And it makes it really, really easy for me to paint details on. So our final project today, I'm using both. I'm using the Schmincke and I'm using the PBO gum. This is like becoming my fast, 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 super fast favorite. And it's super affordable too. It's like, uh, I put the link in the description, but I think it's like seven or $8. This is gonna last you a really, really long time, long time. So is this one, it's gonna last forever. And what I really like about it again, is that how super liquidy it is and how it doesn't get super gummy like that some of those other masking fluids. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look down here. This is the Schmincke that I drew out, and you can see that it's dry, and it feels kind of tacky and a little bit rubbery. And then here's the PBO. It's a little, the layer's thin. I drew, I kind of painted out some um, leafery. The layers are thin. I've let this dry. It takes a couple minutes to dry when you're using it, or you could always heat it from a distance because you will burn it, heat it from a distance to use it. So I'm gonna grab some watercolor here and we're gonna watercolor some things up. But I'm gonna show you, got a couple different things that are happening here. This is the masking fluid pen. Here is, I drew these little whimsical dots and then I painted my flower and then I removed the masking fluid and you can see where those whimsical dots and the veins resisted. Here's the masking fluid, the PBO that painted on. So I really like the fluid pen for adding little graphic details to my stamped images. And I love the fluid, the PBO fluid for painting in and painting in layers. So this is the, this is, I'm kind of progressing up in technique whimsical, getting a little more advanced with our painting in and watercolors. And then this is using that PBO masking fluid in layers. And next month I'm going to, I've got, I'm planning an, more of an advanced tutorial, a little paint along where we're going to do this masking fluid in layers to kind of create something like this. So you can see all of these masked off pieces and these layers. And this is just gonna be fun. This is just me taking the techniques a little bit further with you beyond the card into another project. But we're gonna be working up, um, nerding out over the next couple weeks and working up to that skill set to do a paint along together. So super fun. Okay, now back to our card and back to our watercolor. Now, one of the other things that many of you asked me to, to, um, to share and to nerd out with you all over this coming year was really getting into different watercolor brands, talking about them and what they can do and what makes them a little bit different. Now, I wanted to, today I'm using Rosa Gallery and I've popped out the the colors that I'm using. The Rosa Gallery uh, paint, super affordable, artist grade. I really like to recommend these for paper crafters because look at this, this is a full pan of color and it is an artist grade paint. This particular one, um, I've linked in the description, but they have lots of different iterations of Rosa Gallery. And this one has a little bit more of some of their convenience colors and opaques and things. And that's what we're playing with today. Um, but I really, really like this because for all of these colors um, that you get in the Rosa Gallery sets, there's, it's super affordable and you get so much paint. Now, I've used Rosa Gallery before, but we're going to be using it a little bit more. And I'm just going to kind of progressively share 
progressively share different brands of watercolor with you through the context of different techniques and projects so you can get to learn like what's out there and what might be for you. Now, I'm going to be honest, Rosa Gallery, I've got like three different versions of their sets. They have a botanical set, they have a um, single pigment set, and I've got this set. I, I just love them. I just really think that they're very, very high quality um, watercolor. And the fact that you get so much paint, this is a full pan of paint, you get so much paint for a really affordable price makes them kind of unique. So I super love them. All right, so we're going to dive in. And I especially love them for my paper crafting projects. So the colors that I'm playing with today um, is, and if you're doing this project at home, you're just picking out some blues and some greens. So I've got phthalo blue, cobalt turquoise, and a mint. And I've got two greens here. This is an uh, azo green and like an olive green. Oh, and I have a yellow. Now, I'm just going to come in with my brush, I'm using a Princeton Heritage here. Got a little bit of water, need to kind of move some things around. Because I'm gonna talk about, we're going to paint over this, then I'm gonna talk about what you need to do to remove the masking fluid. And we're working, we're doing these techniques now, we're working up to our final project, okay? I'm gonna take the Thalo Blue, let's give Let's give all these a little bit of water. I've got this little plate here. This is a tapas plate. I want to share this with you. I have done this many times now. This was a set of four or six, I think. Four or five. Hey, my cousin Terry just popped in. Hey, hello. It's great to see you guys. Hi, Aunt Joyce. My Aunt Joyce has popped in. Okay. This is a tapas plate that I got at Home Goods, and for five of them, I got them for $6.99. White porcelain. Love using these for your paints because you can really do a lot of mixing, and you can do, and they just, it's a nice size for your desk. Now, I've used a lot of porcelain plates on this channel, many, 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 but I just recently got these. So I've got this phthalo blue here going to work with this color. That is an intense color. I'm going to come in and just start to go over. I'm just painting over the masking fluid. I'm going to add a little green too. So the masking fluid acts as a resist. So I'm painting. So everything that I'm doing Add a little bit of green here. Let's add a little bit of this blue. Everything that I'm doing, my painting, so my paint is going everywhere, but the masking fluid, it's acting as a resist. I'm gonna paint a little bit over here and just kind of show you the differences. So when I paint with a really intense color over that PBO version, that thinner layer, you can see that that thinner layer just kind of disappears a little bit, but it's still there. It's still there, you can see it. Where here, because my line was a little bit thicker, you can really see it a lot better. So I'm gonna come in and just dry this up a little bit because I've got it super, super wet. And the masking fluid just acts as a resist. Look at these colors kind of blending together. Love. Look at how intense that color is from Rosa Gallery, too. All right, we're just going to heat this just to dry it. Get this good and dry. Looks like everything's pretty dry. A little bit up here. Now you could wait. You could wait and let it dry it on its own. Now masking fluids you can rub off with your finger, but here's what I recommend using. 
This is a gum eraser and you're able to just kind of go over and it lifts, lifts it right up. So you can see how that PBO, look at that, oh, look at that. That's so crisp. Those edges are really, really crisp. I painted that leafery on. Now let's go in here. You can you could get it started. See how I got it started with the um, with the eraser. My paper's a little bit wet. And then I just kind of went in with my finger, and you can just kind of go back and forth and just remove it. So it is, <laughs> we talked about that rubber cement from elementary school back in the 70s using it. It's very similar to that. If you have rubber cement at home and you don't mind the toxicity of it, you could try it and do this technique. But it is pretty stinky. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. All right, this is a little bit wet up here, so when I, um, I'm going to come in and just take this. And then I can pull it off. You can see some of that color is still. So this was the Schminka, which is that tip, tipped version of the fluid, a little bit thicker. And this is the PBO. Well, let's just go ahead and move some of our shavings over here. Wilma just shared she's never heard of masking fluid. It is like magic. It totally is. And I'm going to show you, this is just um, our sample painting. I'm going to show you how we're going to apply this to our card project um, and use it with masking magic. So it's a resist. It resists. So you can do lots of different techniques with it. And we, like I said, I did lots, all of these little polkas and creating that inside of my stamped image was done with the tip, just dropping this in. And we're gonna do that for our final project. So masking fluid is really universal, really super easy to use uh, and easy to find. And I shared a couple different brands. There's lots of different brands. Every watercolor, it seems like every watercolor brand that's out there has their own version of masking fluid. But like I said, I've tested so many, and I shared many at the top of the hour here, um, shared lots of different ones. And these are the two that I have honed in on that seem to be the most user-friendly. Now, you can also do this technique with a white crayon, okay? so. A white crayon or a china marker, like a white china marker or any kind of um, white crayon that you might have in your stash. You can do this technique. So that's a great way to get started and practice and then maybe work up to using a masking fluid. So um, I'm just popping in because I hear people, I see some of the comments. <laughs> Michelle said she loves the smell of rubber cement. It is, it was, it definitely reminds you of childhood when you smell it. Um, Pamela, use the PBO with alcohol inks. Yes. And that's a lot of alcohol ink artists use this PBO drawing gum. And also a lot of drafts persons, people who do drafting and like CAD and things like that. This, you, they use this because it's thin, it's thinner. And like I said, I love it because it's thinner, lasts forever. You dip your brush right in it, you can see it moving, and it gives you a more of a light wash onto your painting. And if you're painting it in, I love working with it. It's very, very easy to get off. All right, let's get all those little crummies off the table. Um, Barbell says, yes, reminds me of doing batiks with wax. That's another thing you could do this this with wax. Now with our, um, you know, like the clear embossing techniques that you can do with your stamps, and you do, um, and they'll it acts as a mask. Very similar, but what I really like about the masking fluids is that it helps us to get creative and add more details to your stamped image. So let's dive in. 
and I'm going to show you, we're going to dive right into it and we're going to do it. We're going to do a little bit of reverse masking and some watercoloring. So here is that big honkin' stamp that I used from the uh, Speak Beautiful Things stamp set. The stamp set is still available with Gina K. Love it. And I stamped it right down in here. Now I use Skeleton Leaves Amalgam Ink and um, because, I, because we're watercoloring and I want it to kind of fade away when I start to do that watercoloring. All right, Judith just asked a question. Will the wax crayon that comes in an Easter egg die kit work? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It absolutely will because it's used for that. It's used for resist techniques when you're dyeing Easter eggs, but it absolutely will work. Um, you could use, you could even use a Crayola white or a Crayola like really pale color so that you can see it on your paper and it will totally work. So I encourage you to give that a go. Okay. All right. Now here is our card project. I have stamped down my cam uh, my chamomile flower in the skeleton leaves. And then I went in and I painted, this is a very, very thin layer, Morning Irma, of the PBO. Very, very thin layer inside of the stamped image. And then I used the Schminka on the outside of my image. And these are just little dots. This is a little bit of watercolor because that came off of our project that we just did. Little dots here. Now, I want to create my background image and then I want to focus on my stamped image on the inside. So I'm going to take my mask that I made using my Gina K Masking Magic. Now, if you missed that at the beginning, I stamped my chamomile flower onto my Gina K Masking Magic. Then I cut it out. And the reason why I love this Masking Magic, it works great with stencils. Gina has shared so many different ways that she uses the Masking Magic. I love it, A, because you can reuse it. It's low tack. And it can take a little bit of a beating with water. So it's perfect for getting wet around the edges. I'm going to put it right over my stamped image, my stamped and my um, masking. I've got some masking going there. And then we're going to come in. Let me move this out of the way. Let's move our stampies out of the way. Find a home for them. I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to work on creating this background. I'm going to come in, let's see, we're just going to play a little bit. I have a big brush, I've got a big brush here. I've got some phthalo blue that I'm going to use. I'm going to take some of this cadmium yellow. Now cadmium yellow is a gorgeous yellow. It's a little bit more opaque for yellows, but it's an absolutely gorgeous yellow. Take a little bit of this. We're going to play with the three blues. I might need to come out here and get my background in here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going right up to the edge of my mask here and I'm getting this entire area wet. Now the masking fluid is resisting the water and it's I've got this fun polka pattern happening. It's resisting the water. We got a little, little extra there. And it's going to let me, I'm going to start popping in some color and letting it do its thing. And you can see, let's pop some of this color in. I'm going right up to the edge of that mask. And that mask is getting wet. And it's kind of taking a beating. I like it. It's really working out here. It's taking a little bit of a beating. It's coming a little bit dark. So we've got a little bit of a technique called, um, I just blanked, sorry. We've got a little bit of a technique called negative painting. So when I pull away that mask, you're going to see that we've got this outer border 
and the mask has kept the color from going up underneath. It might go up underneath a little bit because I can see it lifting a little bit. But we've got that negative painting technique. So the outside is kind of the pat the pattern and the outside of the watercolor here is giving us will give us the illusion of making that shape that's on the inside. I'm going to cover negative painting a little bit more in February and how that can apply to your stamped images and your, your paper crafting projects and a painting. So there's a lot of different things that I'm going to try this year in on our YouTube here. We're going to do a mix paper crafting and painting all with the intention of nerding out a little bit mastering our skills with watercolor and seeing how we can apply them to all the different things we want to do I hope that you all will find that very useful but there's gonna be a lot more nerding out a lot more technique based things a lot more technique based uh, topics and like little mini lessons so that you can learn these techniques and adapt them to your paper crafting and card making projects. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry this because it's very wet, very washy wet. Oh, thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dawn. I always forget to say that. Remember to do the thumbs up thing and subscribe and all that stuff. Okay. We're just going to dry this really good. I don't mind that too much. Mm -hmm. Gloria Share beautiful color combination. These colors from Rosa Gallery are absolutely beautiful and they're some of them are granulating. You can see what I mean, like that there's granulating texture there. I'm gonna pull this mask off. And you can see that that mask is still useful. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. And I'm gonna use it, I'll be able to use it for the next project. So here's what I mean by negative painting. So we've got We've painted up and around our edges and used that mask, the masking magic, to create this negative painting look. So we've got that illusion. If I stamped, if I stamped that image in black or another color, that would be like really cool and like super striking. I wouldn't have to do any painting in it, and I would have this negative painting kind of look to it. So that's one way to achieve it with a mask. You could also stamp it and be like very careful in how you're painting up to those lines, but I'm not so careful. And with super washy washy watercolor techniques like this, it's a little harder to be super super careful. Okay, now we're going to go in and start working. Let me make sure this is super super dry because I want to peel these pieces off. <laughs> Cheryl says I like learning different techniques. Woo! Let's just get this super dry because it's so a little wet in a couple spots. Ouch. Just burnt my finger. Cheryl, you just shared that you used masking pens. It sounds and it looks like they didn't really work out very well. I don't like masking pens, I'll just be honest. I think that they are, um, they're great if you're using, well, they're sort of great. I'm not so worried about this. We're going to cut that out. Um, they're sort of great if you're using them to like write a word with, but they're not really great for bigger, uh, bigger areas or techniques like that. So now we're going to go in and I'm just going to use my, um, my um, eraser, my our gum eraser, and just kind of remove my little dots. 
I am digging this. This is why I love this. You could, again, you could do this technique with a polka dot stamp and some embossing powder and create that resist. But I like this random pattern that I created here. Love it. This super random, whimsical pattern that I've created here. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, now we're going to come in. We're going to start to paint some of the yellow and some of the green. And then just kind of see where, see where it takes us. I'm going to come in. Let's just drop this down here. We're going to start with our yellow. I've put in a few... Oh, I need my brown, too, for the center. I didn't pop that one out. Burnt Sienna. Let's pop that out. Or like a little Quinny Gold. Play with that. Okay. Now, I've done a little bit of a combination of both here. I've used the Schmincke to add little tiny dots in. And then I've done a couple little painted-in highlights with the PBO. So we're going to see what we what we get here. Let's just go in and these this part of the painting I feel like my brush is a little bit too thick. Hold on. Let's pull back a little bit. I'm going to use a smaller number two round here. I'm going to go for precision. So my paper is dry, my brush is wet, my paints are wet and I'm going to come in and just kind of hug the areas of my stamp just kind of do a quick outline clean off my brush my brush is wet the paper's dry and I'm going to use the pigment that's here and just kind of use it and draw it over paint it over to the other petal so kind of doing a little bit of a no line watercoloring here. I do want some definition with all of my petals. So I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to turn my piece here and go paint this in with every other petal at first. Adding a little bit of color. I just picked up some of that blue right there. Don't want that to too fancy. I'm not going for super, super precision here. Ah, Charles just said the Molotov masking pens. Yeah, hit the same button. Okay, the Molotov masking pens I have used. Here's my issue with them is that if you don't use them regularly, they do clog a little bit. So that, that gets on my nerves a little bit. But they do work very well. They're great in art journals. Um... And they work like that very well. So try them. Knowing that you have them, try them with the supply. Since you have them, try them with this technique. You know? And then see how you feel about uh, doing them with this technique. They definitely would work for the outer, like, polka kind of feel. All right. I'm just coming in. I'm going every other petal. Hi, Andrea. Andrea just popped in. Hey, so friends, Andrea is an amazing jewelry artist. I ordered a bunch of bunch of pieces from her. I'm actually wearing a pair of her earrings. Let's put my face. I'm actually wearing her earrings that she made. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Okay, I'm gonna come around and just do this. I'm anxious to see, because I didn't do the polkas in these petals like I did here or like I did in my original sample. I just did a little bit of a highlight. Ooh, I've got a lot of water there. A little bit of highlights just to kind of see what that looks like with the PBO. Just going around and I'll just keep painting these petals and chatting. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. I think the last live that I did before the new year, I was getting my cold for the second time, and that was annoying. 
Uh huh, Andrea. I love them. I love all of the earrings that I bought, got from you. And my bracelets. I was getting a cold for the second time. Super annoyed that that was happening. But it passed. It was just like that cold that everybody got. Came in. And passed. Alright, this cadmium yellow is cadmium yellow across the board, across all brands, is a super beautiful yellow, but it has some opacity to it. So you can see where it's pretty opaque here. So if you really want to water it down, like I am, I'm pulling some of that color away right there. Because I'm, I'm, I don't want to lose the definition in my petals. We are going to lose the definition a little bit. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to get it back. So I'm just kind of taking a little time here and doing the petals. Instead of doing them in a little bit of a washy way. Just kind of adding some of that color in. There we go. And I've got those little resist pieces. I'm anxious to see what they're going to look like. Okay, let's move this around a little bit. Come in right here. I've got this petal. So I'm just hugging the edge, putting a little bit of pigment down, cleaning off my brush, then coming in. I'm pretty choked up on the brush here, sort of like you would with a pen, because I'm kind of going in for precision here. Wet into dry. Go for some precision. See what we get. Okay. I hope everybody had a really great holiday season. I did. With my family. It was beautiful. Question, Dan Donson. Do all brands use the same names for colors? Oh, not a dumb question. Mostly, yes. Dawn, mostly all watercolor brands will use the same names or very similar names. And the reason for that is because pigments, pigments are named that. See how opaque that color is? Um, so most, oops, I just popped my face on and then just popped it on. Most of the colors that are out there will have the same names across brands. Even, except for like some of the brands that are you, you can see them on Amazon, really inexpensive brands. They might just say blue or yellow or not give you any pigment information. But mostly, most other brands or most popular brands will have the same colors. So like cadmium yellow um, that I'm using right now is a very common color. Um, but even in the Rosa Gallery, like this coral color... That's a mix, and they've called it coral, but like Daniel Smith calls it something else. Um, bright red, this tends to be called something else in other brands like um, naphthol red or pyrrol red. So when you start to learn the names and you start to recognize them across brands, you'll notice them by pigment number. So like the pigment number for this Thalo Blue is the same pigment number that you'll see in other brands in Thalo Blue. And after a while, you'll start to recognize them. Like this one is called Violet in Rosa Gallery, but the pigment number is really like a Carvazol Violet. So brands will name them different things. And especially brands that are European, sometimes the names don't translate well um, or translate well to uh, American brands. This particular brand, the Rosa Gallery brand, is um, from the Ukraine. So sometimes the, the colors are, the pigments are exactly what they are and their names are very common, but in their like brochures and they'll name them something different. So that was like the long road to the answer. <laughs> I hope that helped. Um, but most common names, most names are common across the board. Okay. Well, Michelle, she had a nice Christmas. I am feeling better for my cold, but it was weird. It was one of those lingering colds that just was kind of a nuisance. But I just kept moving. 
One of the things I've learned about when you get sick is just keep moving. Just keep moving, take your vitamins. And I like to get outside in the cold when it's really cold and walk. Get fresh air in your lungs. Okay, I'm coming in here. Ah, good. I'm coming here. My brush is wet. The paper's dry. And I'm just using this little bit of burnt sienna just for the center of this flower. Just kind of drawing some of that color down. I'm going to do another layer of yellow, but I'm going to dry it in between before we remove our masking fluid. Now, now here's the fun. We're going to come in with some of the greens. Let's take this Ozo green. Here's a good example, Dawn. Um, Rosa Gallery calls this Areolin Green, but its pigment number really is Ozo Green. So like in other brands, here's the Nerd Out Friends. Other brands like uh, M. Graham, they have an Ozo Green. Um, it sometimes is just called like, um, it's not quite sap green. It'll be called like different, different greens in different brands. But you can tell, and after a while, you just kind of pick this stuff up from the pigment numbers. But these colors from Rosa are super vibrant and heavy, heavy pigment load. And I really dig them. And I, I felt like I was going through some of my supplies and I'm like, I don't use these enough. And you all had asked me to take deeper dives into different brands and what they do and some of their differences because every brand of watercolor is a little bit different. And you start to develop your favorites so I was like, yeah, we're going to bring Rosa out and do this. So Rosa Gallery brand, gorgeous brand, but it's not one of those brands that whooshes in the water. You could see that when I put it in the water, it just kind of stayed where it was. It whooshed a little bit. So that's one of the differences, I would say, with this particular brand. I've got a lot of water here. I'm trying to get some of that water away so I can add a little bit more color right in here. So I'm just, this color is a little bit opaque too and it stays like right where I put it and that's okay. So I've covered that masked area. Now I'm gonna, just going to show you another thing with this. So my brush is wet, my paper's dry, I'm actually just painting in water. So we're going to do a little wet into wet with this brand so that you can take a peek at what I mean. This brush doesn't hold a lot of water, so I'm kind of dipping in and adding a little bit more. So see how I drop this color in, and it just kind of stays. So I have to coax it a little bit and tell it to get in there, make some friends. Get in there and make friends with the water. Sort of like when you're swimming in the summer, and the water is super cold and you kind of tiptoe in. This brand is like that. It's tiptoeing in. It doesn't, it's, it's a little curious. It's not quite sure what to do and when I want it to move. Now there's other brands that we'll talk about over the next couple months as we're using them that will whoosh right away. They'll just take to the water and they'll just whoosh. Okay, I'm gonna dry all of this so that we can do some more layers. Okay. That's looking good. And that's getting pretty dry. Now I'm going to come in before I start to remove some of the masking fluid. I'm going to come in with a little, let's get some of this burnt sienna here wet. I do like this brand because it activates, that color activates very quickly. I'm going to add a little, just a touch. That was a little bit too much, not a touch of this burnt sienna around some of the edges of this petal. You see how I'm really watering this down? But it's just kind of creating a little bit just need the tiniest bit. 
I'm going to go in with a different brush that's holding, that'll hold a little bit more water. Just want a little bit of that color. I'm even going to use some of that color that I've picked up from over here and just kind of drop it in. Let's just tone that down a little bit. And I'm just dropping it in around some of this, the other petals just to get a little bit of definition. I'm not going for precision here because we are, this is a washi watercolor project. But I do want you to have that feeling that the petals have a little bit of dimension to them. So I'm just adding a little bit in, in some random spots here. Go back with a clean brush, pull that away, kind of feather that out a little bit, but you're starting to see that we've got some shape happening here with the petals and our stamped image. I also want to add a little bit right here just kind of bring that together. Now, now that this is dry, I'm going to come in for my need a little bit more water for my stem. Just add a little bit of a line right there and pop this. Just draw that out a little bit. There we go. Loving that. All right, I'm digging this. Let's let's try this and let's take away our little bit of masking and see what that looks like. The masking fluid. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna come in and just kind of start to pull away my little the little highlights that I did. They got some little white highlights. I love that. Loving that. Loving the way that looks. So the little tiny bits that I did with the PBO that I just painted in little lines are giving me a little bit of extra texture and dimension between my petals. Let's go down here. Oh, digging this. And my veins. I just popped and got my veins back. Ah, I love it. Look at that. So all this to say, we use our stamped image to create this beautiful painting, right? And I've been doing that a lot lately on the channel, like encouraging you to use your stamps in a composition to kind of create not only cards, but like frameable projects, right? So this is what we did. That masking fluid, I'm really digging it, really digging the way it looks. Okay, I am going to pop off camera for a moment, because he and I think we're, we're we've got time, so we're going to go ahead and finish this up as a card. Now, this version of it, I popped out this piece too, so I think I'm going to do that. Wilma just shared my favorite of the lines in the flower and the. I love that too. Look how organic that looks. And we've these lines right here. We've got this background that's pretty intense. Hi, Gina. Gina just popped in. Gina, we are talking about masking magic and masking fluids today. Super, super fun. And I wanted to share, I shared with our friends today. Where's my mask? Here it is. My masking magic mask really, really can take water. So it's perfect for using with our watercolor projects. And look, I'm going to use it again. And it did, it helped me with that negative technique. Okay, I'm going to pop off camera. We're going to cut this out with our master layouts die. And we're going to cut this chamomile out. And it's going to, and then we're going to put our card together. So let's just pop over here. Do, do, do. I'm going to see if I can do both at the same time. And then I'll bring the dies in and share it with everyone. Oh, I'm loving this. Okay. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, friends, I'm using my intricut machine too. I absolutely love it because it doesn't make that badonk sound. I actually love it. I feel it's really super smooth and it's really good on my wrist. I have carpal tunnel in both hands and it's fantastic. Okay, I've cut away my two pieces here. Look at that background. I'm just digging it. Digging it. Oh. <laughs> oh, Gina, it's snowing there. Oh my goodness. I know that snow is supposed to make it over. So here is the dye that goes with the chamomile from Speak Beautiful Things. It's the dye that goes with that. And here is my absolutely favorite dye, the scallop dye from Master Layouts 4. Love it. All of that is linked to below in the description. Now we're going to put our card together. All right, I've got a piece of Gina K heavyweight cardstock from my card base. Love it. And I've got a brand spanking new bottle of Connect Glue. We're just going to put this card together. All right, let's go in. I like Connect Glue. Friends, I know you've heard me say this many, many times. I like using Connect Glue, especially with watercolor paper. And the reason is is because you can see how wonky my watercolor paper has gotten from all of the wet and washy techniques that we've done today. And the Connect Glue just really helps adhere the whole project to the card base. I love it. I love it. I see Gina's in the chat. She's talking about the lot. We're talking about the... Um, the release that we have on Tuesday that we talked about at the top of the hour, I'm super excited. This set coming out might be my favorite. I know I see that with every stamp set, but it's because I'm super excited. Okay, now, I forgot my foam tape, friends. So let me grab a piece of foam tape. I'm super excited. I cannot wait to share all the inspiration with you, friends. I'm going to be working on that new set this afternoon, creating some new inspiration, creating some more inspiration, actually. I cannot wait. All right, I've got some foam tape. I'm just going to pop a few little bits onto this chamomile flower and then just pop this up. So, this is just going to give us a little bit of height and a little bit more texture. You can see with the dye, I've got a little bit of that blue popping out. I'm digging the way this looks. This has a very, uh, like a very Van Goghish, starry night look to it. I'm kind of liking it. So we've got a little bit of dimension. You could pop this up a little bit if you wanted it to have a little bit more dimension. But I kind of like the idea that we've got a little bit of dimension without a ton of height. Look at all that masking. Look at the masking fluid background that we have. That watercolor. A little bit of the highlights here and those veins that we drew in. I just absolutely love it. Ah, oh, okay. So let's bring this in. Here was the original inspiration. We're going to do a, a little nerd out recap, a little bit of recap on the techniques that we used today. Okay, so here was the original inspiration. And in this inspiration, I did some polka dots inside of the flowers. So when you're looking at your stamped images, especially big, honking, wide open stamped images like this, consider other ways to add texture to it. And this is one of the ways that we did it today was with masking fluids and masking magic. You could also stencil in these spaces. Adding some texture and dimension just kind of gives your project a little extra oomph without all the height. And it continues to make the stance be the star of the show, which I always talk about. Okay, again, the little bit of a recap. We used masking fluids today the two different masking fluids. I had the one that's the schminka that's in the tip and then the PVO that I use that you can paint on, which is super fun. 
We talked about, where is my beautiful? Here he is. We talked about using our masking magic. This mask, this mask has been through so much with this stamp set and it just keeps asking for more. Again, it's still low tack, still usable. It got wet, but when it'll dry and I can use it again. So I really, really like the masking magic for watercolor projects because it can take the water and it doesn't shred. It's still working. Love, 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 love it. Okay, I'm just, I'm seeing things in the chat, but I wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions. Now, here was the other things, masking fluid with pen. I dropped those little polkas inside those petals. Super fun. Painted. This is that masking fluid in layers, negative and positive techniques. Today we talked about it in our paper crafting projects. We're working up to some more advanced techniques I'm going to share in February. All right. All right, friends. Let's pop to, yeah, let's pop to the front. <laughs> my favorite is the one I made today. Moma just said your favorite is, I think this might be my favorite too because I didn't do polkas. So super fun. Okay, friends, this was a really fun tutorial. This is a really great start to the new year and how I'm gonna shape some of the tutorials um, from here on out. I got so much feedback from you all in this past year that you were really into me taking deeper dives into techniques like we did today and how you can apply that to your card making projects and just using that creativity and trying something new. So I really love that idea and we're going to keep doing it. Now, a couple quick announcements before we go. Tuesday, Gina K Designs stamp set release. Like I said several times today, I'm super excited for this release. I have a lot of fun ideas I'm going to be sharing with you. So that launch is happening on Tuesday at, um, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. I always have, I was doing a little time zone thing in my brain and I will have a release video um, on this channel after the release that we do live with Gina K on Gina's um, YouTube channel, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then I will be back here next Thursday with a brand new card and technique tutorial with my new release that's coming out on Tuesday. So I'm just doing a quick look at all the feedback. Oh, everybody is having so much fun. Okay, friends, thanks so much for joining me today. Again, all of the links for all the products that we use today are down in the description. If you're interested in getting on my email list, finding out about all the things that I'm going to be sharing here on YouTube, that's down in the description. Pop on it. I send an email once a week. And it tells you when the new releases are happening and it tells you when I'm going live and all the wonderful things. Okay, friends, thanks so much for joining me today. Today was a ton of fun and it was just like, I love starting the new year fresh and starting it with some really fun watercolor. I hope you really enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. I cannot wait to see what you create please make sure you share it with me. Tag me in social media or email me. Okay, friends, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Don't forget, Tuesday night, brand new stamp set release. Gina K Designs, so many good things coming out. Can't wait. Bye, friends.